Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall everybody give to you. The measure that you use, it will be measured unto you. Amen. Amen. Listen to another text of point of departure that's going to really set us free. Malachi 3.10 says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and watch when I throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough for you to store it. Matter of fact, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. God has set you free for increase. Oh, look at somebody and tell them, God has set you free for increase. Tell somebody else, you've been set free for increase. Now I dare you to give God a shout of praise like you free already. Come on, tap somebody on the way down. Say, you've been set free, child. You've been set free. You've been, you've been set free. That's prophetic right there. You've been set free for increase. Tap yourself and say, set free, set free, set free. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Somebody holler, indeed, I've been free. I'm free, I'm free. The thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Somebody holler abundance. One of the major areas that the enemy seeks to keep us bound is in the area of our finances. The enemy is messing with our money. I tell your neighbor, don't you stand for that mess right there. But I read a Huffington Post article that cited finances or the lack thereof as one of the top 10 reasons why Americans get divorced. Right up there with miscommunication and the inability to resolve conflict, probably about money. Oh, let me help you. Financial stress is the work of the devil. Look at somebody say, it's the work of the devil. But the word says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Somebody ought to give God praise for destroying the works of the devil off of your finances, off of your income, off of your increase, off of your investments. Somebody ought to give God praise because there's some property that belongs to you that the enemy is holding up in the pipeline. And we about to destroy that thing in the name of... Oh, y'all ain't giving it praise like you really know who you serve. You serve the God of abundance. Somebody ought to give him praise. You serve the God of the overflow. You serve the God of increase. You serve the God of more than enough. You serve the God of my cup runneth over. You serve the God of the good measure, of the pressed down, of the shaken together, of the running. You serve the God of the he makes all grace abound towards you. You serve the God of an open heaven. Somebody ought to give God some praise if you believe that's the God that you serve. God says he's given us all things richly to enjoy. In other words, God wants you to enjoy everything that you have. You are not supposed to be ashamed of being blessed. 
God wants you to drive nice, live nice, run nice, walk nice, dress nice. Tell your neighbor, that's why you're so nice. Because your daddy said you got it like that. You're supposed to enjoy it. But more than enjoying it, he wants you even more to be used as a conduit to bless other folk. God wants you to be so blessed that when you bless other folk, mama, you don't even feel it. I don't even have to count as to whether I can afford to bless you because I'm so blessed that I don't have to count it unless I want to. Do I have anybody in here who wants to be so blessed that you say, you know what? I don't give loans no more. I just give it to you. You don't have to pay me back. I ain't gonna chase you down at the family reunion. I'm so blessed I forgot that I gave it to you. Do I have anybody up in here who want to be a big baller like that in the kingdom? And now somebody give God some praise in the balcony because the anointing falls from the top down and we want some of your overflow to ooze down on us. Somebody give God some praise up in here because it's time for some increase. Hear me? God says, I want you to have so much supply that if anybody think about a need, you got enough seed to meet it and bring thanksgiving to God. But here's the deal. He wants you to have more so that you can bless more. He says that you're set free for increase. You are set free. I don't care if you don't feel like it. I ain't talking about feelings. I'm talking about faith fact. You are set free. I don't care if you $30,000 in debt. You can be $50,000 in debt. But if daddy said you free, you free. Here's the deal. You got to get you some Galatians 5 and 1 in your spirit that says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with wherewith Christ hath made you free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You got to make up your mind that you're going to stand free in Christ Jesus in what you believe. I ain't talking about what I'm looking at. I walk by faith and not by sight. I am set free whether I feel like it or not. The problem is I got entangled in some stuff that put me in bondage. But I come to serve notice on your bondage this morning. It's time to be set free from every yoke of bondage, from every debt, from every credit card, from every lender, from every enemy, from every fear, from your spirit of religion, from your poverty and spirit of lack, from your generational curse of poverty. We, oh, you need to grab somebody and say, we about to be set free from all of that stuff. And I'm set free from disobedience. I'm set free from fear. I'm set free. Come on, I see a daughter ready to be free. She said, I ain't waiting. I'm being set free now. Forget this. Hear pastor real good because the enemy don't want you to hear this for real. Hear me real good. Foundational to financial increase. The point of departure, the freedom for debt-free living is the tithe. Look at somebody say, yes, he said it. The tithe. The tithe is key to being set free and remaining free and getting ready for your overflow and your increase. Why do I say that? The tithe sets you free to receive the blessings of obedience. Oh, somebody holler, there's a blessing in obedience. Come on, look back at Matthew, I mean, uh, Malachi 3 and 10. It says, it says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Bring the whole tithe. God said, bring the whole tithe. Notice this was not a request. This was not a suggestion. This was not, I, I, I really think if you do this, daddy said, bring the whole tithe. Just like Jesus says, love one another. He said, I ain't asking you. He says, I'm coming. 
Now this command stuff, it gets on my soulish nerve. Because if you anything like, I don't want nobody telling me what to do with my stuff. If you gave it to me, don't you hate that? Somebody give you a gift, then they want to tell you. That's why gift cards are cool, but don't tell me where to spend it. Just give me the money. Let me decide the place I want to go at and spend it. You just want to get some more points for giving me the card. Just give me a, a little visa. Let me go get my own stuff. So I, I have an attitude when it comes to commanding me to do some stuff. But God's commands, hear me, beloved, always set you free to receive the blessing that's connected to the command. Oh, come on. Please walk with me. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Can we walk a while? You're too smart to be hollering at. Deuteronomy 28. Come on, hurry up, because you got somewhere to go. Verse 1 says, check it out. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, God getting them ready for their blessing, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. All these blessings will just run you over and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. He says, Will, you will be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the country. Your children, the fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young, your livestock, the calves, all of your ingenuity will be blessed. Verse 6. You will be blessed when you come and blessed when you go. You're going to be blessed going and coming. Blessed just going to be running. You're going to be a ooze of blessing all over the place. I like this part. Verse 7 says, the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated, not behind closed doors, but right in front of you so you can see God whooping them down. They will come at you from one direction but they're going to have to flee from you in seven directions. The Lord will send a blessing on your savings account, on your 401k, on all of your investments, and everything you put your hands to, that is the real Midas touch. The Lord your God will bless you in the land you are living in. Wherever you live, wherever you move, blessings are going to follow you. You move to Phoenix, you're going to have a Phoenix blessing from God right there. Wow, look at somebody say, obedience is real good, G. It's real good. It's better than sacrifice. Anybody want to be real blessed up in here? Do I have some more better blessed folk up in here? Hit your name and say obedience, baby. Obedience. If you obey his commands, including the tithe, it's a setup. It's a setup for God to lift you up so he can brag on you and say, look at what happens when my children obey me. I can't help but to bless their socks off. <laughs> Secondly, adherence to the command to tithe sets up God as priority and sets you up uh, to increase and prosperity. Look at Proverbs 3. Turn over there with me. God, I'm going to put you first in everything. Not Nordstrom's, not my car, not my house, not my children. You first. Look at it. Proverbs 3 verse 10. Then your barns, wait, wait, honor the Lord with your wealth. He didn't say riches, wealth. Somebody holler, I want to be wealthy, not rich. Rich, you can keep track of that. Wealth is just, I don't know. Ask Renard, he counts my money now. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns, there they go again, will be filled to overflow. Can't even contain it. And your vats will brim over with new wine. Symbolic of prosperity. Tithing is a way of putting God first. Making God premier, check it out. And positioning yourself and your life for increase. When I tithe, I put God first. I position him first. Then I'm positioning myself 
for God to release his favor on my life. I position him first and I'm automatically positioning myself. Anybody want to get in position for a breakthrough? Somebody holler, here I am, God. If you're looking for somebody to bless, here I be right up in here. I'm on row number four, sitting four seats to the east. You can get a sister right here. In the somebody give God praise if you're ready for God to do it. <laughs> Tithing puts him first. Tithing is an act of worship. Tithing is an act of the heart. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your strength. That's the commandment. But then he says, but where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Come on, it ain't just about an obligation. It's a hard thing. It's saying, God, I love you enough to trust you with the tithe. I've been playing with you, but I love you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He said, and his righteousness, being right with God. And he said, and everything else that's been getting on your last nerve, he said, he'll bring it unto you so you don't have to worry about, do I have anybody who know I'm telling the truth up in here? Give God a shout so the devil can get mad. The command to tithe is a key and a call to your increase. God is calling you. God is saying, increase, increase. The devil said, don't you tithe. God says, increase. Like when the street lights come on and your mom used to call you. So you need to know who your name is. Your name is not poverty. Your name is not in debt. Your name is not poor. Your name is not I need. Your name is increase. Your name is prosperous. Your name you need to answer to your name, doggone it. So, so, so what's the tie? Tell your neighbor, stay with me. Don't leave now. You miss your blessing. Can I do a little review? Okay. What is the tie? I'm glad you asked. I say, good question. Oh, my God. According to Leviticus 27, verse 30, that the tithe was literally the tenth of all produce, of all livestock, and everything that the people of God possess. The tithe means the tenth. Somebody say the tenth. Ten. Two scriptures, in Genesis and Hebrews, we can see that it means the tenth. Turn over to Genesis 14, verse 20. Genesis 14, 20. I'm gonna start, y'all throw it on the screen to help a brother out. It says, and praise be to God most high who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him Melchizedek a tenth of everything. Hebrews 7 and 4 says, just think how great he, Melchizedek, was. Even the patriarch, Abraham, gave him, Melchizedek, a tenth of the plunder. Both in Genesis and in Hebrews, you see tenth tithe used interchangeably. The tithe is the tenth, and the tenth is the tithe. I said the tithe is the tenth, and the tenth is the tithe. Uh, the tithe is the tenth, and the tenth. Uh, uh, uh. I am from the hood. I can do it when I do it. When I do it, and I do it, and the tithe is the tenth. I said the tenth is the tithe. Uh the last service. I'm drunk in the spirit. Ain't no telling what's going to come out of my mouth. Pray for me. Look at Deuteronomy 14, 22 reads. It says, be sure to set aside a tenth of all that your fields produce each year. Be sure to set aside. See, see we're waiting for the spirit to hit us to tithe. You ain't going to feel like tithe. Who feels like giving up what they think is their money? You have to make up your mind and be reasonable and plan it. I, 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 don't, I don't think about it you know, as soon as I get up here. I think about beforehand, I got to give you what's yours because I'm setting myself up for an increase up in here that I won't even have room enough. When you tithe, you set yourself aside for increase the word says that the tithe is the tenth and the tenth is the tithe 
of your gross income of everything that comes in. Don't be cheating God after Uncle Sam then took 40%. You want to give God, to, Uncle Sam put you in jail if you don't pay him. Somebody say 10%. So that means I can't arbitrarily say that I'm going to give God $10 worth of tithes. This week, I'm going to give him $10. I paid $10 of my tithes. Not if you only, unless you make only $100 a week. I'm, I'm tithing 1%. 1% is 1%. A tithe is what? Yes. Tell your neighbor, you smart. Dude, that gal, you're smart. Tithing is biblical, but you, you know what? We, we become real. Haven't you heard it? Well, well, actually, your pastor is amiss because the tithe is an Old Testament principle. It comes from the law, and therefore, now that we're under the dispensation of grace, there is no, Jesus doesn't say anything about tithing. You need to tell them, stop lying, you devil. Because the devil is trying to use you to keep me in bondage. You do you, me do me, boo, and let me help you with what I understand. What we need to understand is not only is the tenth found in the New Testament, but it's key to increase because the tithe is an enduring principle that moves even to all eternity. Where you get that from? Come on, go on back to Genesis 14, verse 18. Uh-huh. It says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. And he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, boy, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything. Do, do y'all remember this story? Huh? Abram had just defeated some kings who had stolen his property, who had stolen his nephew Lot. Verse 14 says that Abram pursued the kings. But verse 16 says that he recovered all of the goods that had been stolen and he recovered his relatives that the enemy had entangled. Hear me. The reason the enemy does not want you to tithe is because tithing is a spiritual weapon. It is permission to set you free as part of God's plan to go back and get everything that the enemy has stolen from you. I just want to know, is there anybody up in here who's mad as heaven that the enemy has stole some stuff from you and act like it was his property? Is there anybody in here who has lost some sleep? Is there anybody in here who's been stressed over some stuff? Is there anybody in here whose child who's been caught up in some ignorant stuff? Is there anybody up in here who's ready to go and take back everything that the enemy has stolen? I dare you to shake your neighbor and say, let's take it back. Take your joy back. Take your peace back. Take your finances back. Take your inventions back. Take your dreams back. Y'all ain't shaking nobody. You're going to let the enemy keep your stuff. Tell your neighbor, wake up. I'm going to help you fight. The weapons of our warfare are not... After Abraham's great victory... The priest of God most high comes out to Abram. Say, man, verse 19, praise be blessed to be Abram by God most high. Do the God who delivered your enemies into your hand. 